Hello everyone, Art Cyan here. I just wanted to show you guys how to quickly generate a point position pass uh, to be used in compositing from Blender into whether it's in its native compositor or uh, something else like Nuke or Fusion. Um, so let's check this out. So this is a beauty I got rendered out of Blender. And uh, let's say I wanted to do some post work on it, do some color corrections or grading, um, you know, to certain elements. So uh, there are many ways you could go about that, like world position passes, um, normals and whatnot, crypto mats. But if you wanted something a bit more um, fluid and easy to work with after the fact, after you've received your passes, uh, point position pass is a pretty great one. Um, let me explain for a second. So um, point position pass, world position pass is uh, pretty solid for static objects like environments, let's say, or, or something that is moving on an object level. But if you have a object that's animating, as in the vertices are actually animating, um, those masks that you get they're going to uh, stay in, you know, static. So anything that moves through with vertex animation, it's going to swim through it. It's not actually going to stick um, if you look at the green one, for example. Uh, so how do we get it to stick? You can see the color correction I've done on uh, this guy's face, the blue it's actually sticking to his face. And um, one of the ways to go about doing that, at least in Blender, is to use from your texture coordinate, uh, you just want to use this generated node and plug that in. Uh, I have it assigned on a AOV layer here, if you go to view layer, all the way at the bottom, I've created a couple of passes, and one of them is this uh, P mask. So when you hit plus, you create a new pass, whatever you name it, um, let's say ETC, that is supposed to match up exactly, uh, you know, lowercase, uppercase, um, with this node name right here. <clears throat> so, um, let me remove that. Uh, so P mask, right? It's very straightforward, but what does the generated option actually do in the texture coordinate? Well, um, if we look at this character right here, if you actually go to the um, modifier, in this case, the, this has an armature. If I disable this, you'll see that this character it comes in as a T pose. Uh, so so the generated node, uh, node will create a bounding box around your object, and it will assign a uh, XYZ value. So RGB from XYZ. And once that is assigned on an object level, uh, once this guy moves around, it's going to stick. So here's an example of what that looks like the actual channel. Um, if we go to P mask, what I created, uh, here's what it will look like when it's in T pose. I can grade down a little bit so you can see, but basically it's going to do a red, green, blue translated from X, Y, Z. And um, once this actually starts to move, those values are going to stay uh, regardless. You can see there's you know this greenish uh, color on his arm, red purplish at you know at the legs. That stays as is. It does not move. Therefore, the value that's used from a node uh, created from position mask, it's is going to uh, maintain that value. You can see right here 0.51, 0.96, 0.75. Uh, so if you wanted to, let's say after the fact, after you've received some, you know, some renders, uh, if you wanted to go in and 
change those colors uh, or color correct it or whatever, uh, basically you could take this node that comes with a picker. You would click where you would want it. So let's say uh, I want to put it uh, somewhere on his hand right here. Now, wherever that goes, that's going to stick to his hand. And this is a great um, technique to use. Uh, you know, like let's say uh, this guy right here had a weapon with you know, and he's firing it. There's some muzzle flashes. You could you could use that picker and uh, color correct it. You know, time it to the muzzle flashes and just add a little bit of uh, yellow, orange, whatever, um, and animate that here after the fact in comp. So let's go back here for a second. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. It's these two nodes, never mind everything else. But uh, I've done this on a material override level. Uh, I have something called a utility. And in order for, for these AOVs to actually um, work, you need to have the, this AOV within the actual shader output. Uh, so just be aware of that. But yeah, like I said, it's it's a terrific um, technique to use in situations like this. Um, let me know if you guys want to know about more, uh, you know, stuff like this in, in terms of UV passes, how to create your own um, object position passes, light groups. Uh, here, I've actually, since I was in here, I thought, I might as well break it out. Uh, I've got a light group for the pink, one for the yellow, which which corresponds with uh, these lights right here. Yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think, and I'll try to keep producing stuff like this. Thanks.